we now know Gabby was strangled, and we can tell you what detail will matter most to investigators. We also learned something else from the coroner. Here it is. As far as the uh, time of death, uh, we are estimating three to four weeks from the time that uh, the body was found. Now, this is an approximation, right? The coroner went on to say, uh, give or take a week. Uh, the finding, however, is significant in terms of timing. We're going to take you into the timeline and show you why. And here's what we know. Gabby was found September 19, Wyoming's Bridger Teton National Forest, thanks to other campers. That's how the cops found out where she was. Dr. Blue, the coroner, says they estimate she was killed three to four weeks before she was discovered. Now, they're always going to give a range. It's hard to know precisely. So where does that put the death? Approximately between August 22, which it can't be, I'll explain why in a second, and the 29th, okay? We know we can narrow that window. Well, the last reported sighting of Gabby Petito by witnesses was on August 27, Mary Piglet's restaurant, Jackson, Wyoming. So if the coroner's time frame is right and the date of the last sighting is right, which we know it is, Gabby may have been killed sometime between August 27 and August 29. We know her fiancé, Brian Laundry was still in the area during August 27 to August 29. How? Because two drivers who picked him up hitchhiking say they both gave him rides without Gabby, without Gabby, on August 29 in the Grand Teton National Park. You'll remember he was described as seeming a little off. He got in a car, then he got out, he offered the money. Behavior was erratic, said the other person who picked him up. It wasn't until September 1 that Brian Laundry showed up back at home across the country in Florida in Petito's van. They shared it. So the timeline could be off plus or minus a week, but it potentially excludes the idea that this could not have been the fiance. By looking at the timeline, I wasn't there, I was home, I had come back to deal with the storage unit. Those explanations won't seem to cover what is now in the world of probability. However, investigators are working with more. First, we know that Gabby was found near a campsite. No reports that she was hidden or buried. What does that mean to investigators? It is suggestive of a spontaneous event a lack of planning, pointing to a crime of passion. Who commits crimes of passion? Most often, someone familiar to the victim. We also learned today, as expected, DNA was collected from Gabby's body. Now, what will be interesting is if there is any finding of any DNA that was not the fiancé's. Why? Because if there is no body else except him, in terms of evidence of contact with the body, with Gabby, the idea that this was a random attack by a stranger becomes more suspect. However, the big takeaway for investigators is going to be this part of the autopsy. You see it on the screen? Cause is death by manual strangulation throttling. Throttling is a little bit of a term of art within uh, the forensic field. That is strangled by human force, meaning there's no evidence that this was a rope or a garage or something like that, you know, something, uh, some implement or tool. Now, what does that indicate? Again, lack of planning, suggestive of a crime of passion. That makes finding Gabby Petito's fiance, Brian Laundrie, more important than ever. Now, where he is concerned, Two things very damaging, uh, on top of everything that was learned today. The only person I've ever heard of in all my years doing this job whose loved one goes missing and they not only refuse to help look for the person, but won't communicate with her family. Now that is a matter of fact since Gabby Petito disappeared. Then he went missing since September 13th, which could easily be construed by investigators as evidence of his own negative feelings about his role in the situation. Uh, his parents and investigators have been searching with no look, uh, luck at the Carlton Nature Reserve in Venice, Florida for weeks. That's where the parents say he went. 
There is no other indication that he went there except that they say that's where he went. Now, interestingly, the attorney for the Laundry family reiterated after this ruling was announced that Brian is only considered a person of interest in relation to Gabby's death and that he's only charged at this point with the unauthorized use of a debit card that the lawyer volunteered was Gabby's. The indictment did not say that. Now, what was the point of such a statement? It's interesting, but it's a side issue. The big question is with what investigators now know, do they have for an, enough for an arrest? And if so, what would the charge be? That's where our, we turn to the better minds now. We have CNN legal analyst and criminal defense attorney, Joey Jackson, forensic pathologist, former medical examiner, Dr. Michelle Dupree. It's good to have you both. Doc, let me start with you. Uh, let's deal with what we know, and then I'll go to Joey about what that could show, all right? On the no side, um, were you surprised by this? No, not really. Um, I, I do think that it is a crime of passion, and strangulation is very common in those. Now, what else uh, do you think that you can tell about circumstances based on what you know from the forensics, the location of the body, the timing, and what they said in the autopsy? This all tells me that, again, it was probably not planned. It was probably a spontaneous act. It was most likely um, domestic violence related. Um, it also tells me that um, he didn't try to cover it up. Um, if she was killed there, and I'm not sure that we know that she was, um, if she was not dumped there, then again, this was very random, or not random, but spontaneous. Um, now, if she had been dumped there, left there, um, wouldn't that be somewhat inconsistent with her being found out in the open, as opposed to if somebody was going to leave a body somewhere, wouldn't they want to hide it? Yes and no. Um, again, they may just dump it there and want to get away quickly, thinking that because they've moved to a secondary location, um, there would be less evidence and less likely to be found. Um, it's still a forensic countermeasure. What does that mean? Um, it means that it's still a, um, a method of trying to cover up what they did if that person was moved from the original crime scene. How often is strangulation, specifically throttling, which means with human hands, as opposed to using an instrument uh, or any kind of device, uh, how common is it that that is someone familiar to the deceased? It's very common. That is one of the most common ways that a partner would strangle, would kill another person is by strangulation. How do you die by strangulation? Um, it's asphyxia, which is cutting off the oxygen to the brain, and it's typically by the hands wrapped around the throat or the neck in order to cut off that circulation how long, and therefore the oxygen. How long does it take? Um, well, it depends, you know, on how hard it's done. Um, it can take minutes. It can take, um, you know, a few minutes, really. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Doc. Um, now, Joey, in terms of what this will mean to investigators, uh, the headline question is, do you believe on what they see in this autopsy, they have enough to arrest Brian Laundrie if they can find him? There's no question about it, Chris. Good evening to you and to Dr. Dupree. The reality is, is that you just conducted a prosecutor's direct examination of a witness who's going to give you information critical to the conviction. Why? Dr. Dupree spoke to the issue of how it would be a crime, right? That would be passionate. That would be intimate. She spoke to the issue of strangulation. She spoke to the issue of the nature of the cause of death, etc. And then you ask yourself the question, well, who would that individual be? And then you have other information. You specified it and spelled it out very well, Chris, in the outset with respect to the timeline. But I would suggest the prosecutor has more. Like what? There are these prior bad acts. And if you want to talk about a rosy relationship where everything was great and fun and he would never do such a thing, I say just wait one minute. You look at the Mohab interaction with respect to the... Uh, non-arrest, right? But the domestic violence issue, that's one. You look at witness statements with regard to how they behave in an interaction in a restaurant, that's two. Why is that important? Because prior bad acts give you an indication of a pattern of behavior. So who would this person be who did this, who was traveling around with her, the very person who engaged in those other negative interactions? I think it's powerful, significant. What's that? The autopsy report with respect to the cause of death. 
Uh, him leaving slash disappearing means what? It means consciousness of guilt in the event that you did nothing, in the event that you have clean hands, in the event that, oh my goodness, you want to find her, you want to know what happened to her, you'd be the first to call the police, wouldn't you, sir? You'd be the first to go and help the family, wouldn't you, sir? You'd be the first to find out and determine what happened to the one you loved and wanted to spend the rest of your life with, the fiance you were traveling across the country dictating every single thing you were doing on Instagram. But what happens? You're in the camera smiling on Instagram, showing what you're eating, cooking, everything else, and then all of a sudden you disappear? Is that indicative of conduct, which is suggestive of innocence? I say not.